Hey, what's up guys, welcome to Trending Reviews. So if you're on a very tight budget and you're looking to upgrade your phone or just get a second phone for whatever purpose, then look no further than the Yumi Digi A7 Pro. I guarantee most of you will not have heard of this. Now this comes in at just 140 pounds and it does come with some slight flagship features. Why so cheap? Let's go ahead and look at the specs and see the performance and see if it's actually worth you guys to buy. So let's get straight into it. Okay, let's take a look at the phone. Now this is a 6.3 inch full HD display with a tiny bit of smooth curved glass edges. You might not be able to see it, but it slightly blends around the edges there, which is a very nice touch to be honest. It has 82% screen to body ratio, and it does come with that teardrop notch there at the top. So you get some pretty cool items there in the box. As you can see, there's this very nice design cover as well, a case for the phone. It's black and it is a silicone case. So very nice touch there. You also get a very nicely presented user guide pack there as well, which has the SIM card tray opener just inside. Then inside you get the USB-C fast charging cable with the power plug as well. Now inside the phone, it does come with a octa-core four gigabytes of RAM and the ARM Cortex A53 processor, which is operated by the Helio P23 chipset. It does come in two models. It comes with 64 gigabyte storage and 128 gigabyte storage as well. This one being the 128 gigabyte model. And it comes in two colors, cosmic black and ocean blue. This one is cosmic black, as you can see. It does have a glass back as well, so you are susceptible to get fingerprints all over them. Now, as you can see from the back as well, it does have a fingerprint scanner there, which is a nice touch. And I've always been a fan of these as well much like the ones you used to get on the Google Pixel phones. So that is very nice. And it does have a quad camera set up there as well with a slight bump to the camera. Now, the one thing I really like about this phone is that it comes with a 4150 milliamp hour battery, which is a massive amount and it is on par with the latest flagship phones nowadays. So you can get about a day and a half and if you're not really using your phone much, up to two days of usage. And it does come with USB-C, so you can get fast charging there as well. One other thing I really like, it does have the headphone jack as well, and you have stereo speakers there at the bottom. On the right hand side, you have the volume controls and the power button there. No buttons along the top. And then you also have a SIM card tray there, which allows you to add two SIM cards and a TF micro SD card as well to expand your storage. So plenty of options there as well, which is awesome. Now the phone comes preloaded with Android 10, which is a really nice touch as well. And so far playing around with the phone, you do get a slight lag when you're doing a lot of high intensive scrolling and performance with multiple apps open. But nonetheless, it's actually very reasonable. Now you have a few options to unlock your phone. You have the standard swipe, pattern and pin number. You can also add a password. But like I've done, you can also use the fingerprint scanner at the back. And this also comes with face unlock. So pretty much every way you can unlock a phone, this does that. So that is a very nice touch as well. Okay, so just testing out the gaming performance, I downloaded Real Racing 3 on the App Store. To be honest, with the four gigabytes of RAM, I was actually quite impressed that this is quite a high intensive game. It's using the accelerometer inside the phone as well to turn left and right when I'm racing here on the track. And it's actually performing really well. I'm not seeing too much of a lag. There is some occasions where it does skip a frame as well here and there, but it's not so noticeable and it doesn't happen too often. Now, as you can see, it's performing really well. I'd expect a performance like this to be even in the higher flagship phones. So I'm pretty impressed. Now what I'm going to do as well in the same game, I'm going to try to simulate some crashes as well to make the visuals and the performance try and lag a little bit to see if that is possible. Okay, so I'm on the next circuit. I'm trying to vibrate the car as well by crashing into the walls to see if it actually causes any lag or if it skips some frames. But of course this phone has a very low refresh rate compared to like the top end ones nowadays that you get 90 and 120 even sometimes. But even then, as you can see, it still performs very well. And if I do reverse, there's no real issues that I've experienced. So all in all, I think you can use this pretty much with any type of game on the App Store. Now just to note, I do not have any background apps running. I suggest when you are gaming, don't have any other background apps running because that could probably slow this down a lot more. Now with the camera setup, it does have a five megapixel macro camera there, which you can get as close to as two centimeters. Then you have a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with 120 degree field of view. Below that, you have another 16 megapixel main telephoto camera there with f1.8. 
And then lastly, you have a five megapixel depth of field 1.8 as well, which has a built-in super night mode. The front camera is also a 16 megapixel selfie camera as well. Now in terms of the video recording, you can only record at 1080p at 30 frames per second on both the front and the back cameras. Now let's go ahead and take some sample photos and videos with this phone and see how they come out. Okay, let's take a look at the main camera for some simple photography set with the HDR mode on, but the AI image enhancement turned off. In this first pic, the image seems a little overexposed with no deep black colorization. The top I'm wearing is a deep black color, but here it seems to be a little bit dark brown, but everything else seems bright and clear. Now this is where the sun disappeared behind the clouds and you can now actually see the darker color of my top and the true tones of the picture. So this is a lot more impressive. In this next picture, there definitely is a wide range of color accuracy in the flowers, but it lacks a stronger sharpness that I'd expect. But that's something that can easily be edited once the picture is taken with an app like Google Photos, for example. This last one is a mix. I came out very clear in this one and the exposure, the saturation and sharpness of myself seem quite accurate. However, the background in the distance is very washed out and the sky is completely overexposed. Additionally, the tree branches above my head are a little blurry too. So in conclusion, I would say that using the main camera in the right lighting, you can actually get better than expected pictures, but overexposure is one to be aware of when you have very bright light using this lens. Moving on to macro shots, I left this on 4x3 ratio and there is no AI or HDR options when in this mode. You can see here I got right up and close to this dandelion, possibly 2-3 to three centimeters away, and I was very impressed in the details it captured, albeit it might not be as sharp as you'd expect, but not many flagship phones offer this mode, so that's a big win for me. Again, same scenario, but with this daffodil. The phone was so close, nobody was even able to see what was behind my phone when I was taking the picture, and the results were pleasantly surprising too. The shadow of the phone didn't take away from the bright yellow color of the flower when it came out. But if you keep the phone about 5 centimeters or more away from the actual subject, then it stops becoming a macro shot and as you can see, it can become a little blurry, just like this example. Here, I wanted to showcase the difference of how wide you can make your shots from the main 16 megapixel lens to the ultra wide 16 megapixel lens. In this first pic, it's very bright. Bit of lens flare, but when you look at the ultra wide in the 4x3 ratio, the lens opens up to more light intake, ultimately leading to an adjustment of colors in the picture, which in this instance is dramatically different. The wide angle itself is impressive, but the image can seem a little skewed, kind of like a fisheye lens, and it's at this point hard to even make myself out. In this example, you can immediately notice the difference in the shadows, the contrast, and the exposure. Yes, it does a great job in pulling back a very wide field of view, but at the cost of reducing the image quality a bit more than you'd actually like. However, for the price point of this phone, I actually think it does a good job in that sense. So here's examples with the front facing camera, which doesn't have AI or HDR mode. Surprisingly, I actually think some of my best shots from this phone have come from the selfie camera. The image is super clear and you can even notice the details in my hair with regards to the white hair I've unfortunately got going on. The top I'm wearing is not as deep black as it was in reality, but impressive nonetheless. I guess that has a lot to do with the lighting outdoors as well. Even on a sunny day, it's very detailed and less overexposed than taking pictures from the main back camera, but at a much longer distance. In terms of the video recording, this phone can only record up to 1080p max resolution, as you'd expect at this price, of course. But if you are going to use this handheld to do recording, just remember there is no video stabilization, so the footage would be shaky just like this, so a gimbal would be needed. Quality of the video, however, is still not too bad. Alright guys, so I'm just recording a video with the front selfie camera to test out the audio. It's recorded currently at 1080p. I'm just holding the phone in my hand so I don't have any gimbal or anything to stabilize the video so you can actually see what the stabilization is like on the front camera. So let me know what you guys think of the audio. Is it quite clear? Can you hear the wind? Can you hear the background noises? Or is my voice very clear coming through? Let me know. Alright guys, so in conclusion, this all depends on what you need a new phone for. If you are looking for one with a very good quality camera, then you may want to wait for upgrading to something a little bit slightly more expensive, a little bit more flagship than this one. But if you want something that you can do day-to-day -day usage, check your emails, browse the internet, play some low intensive games, maybe use this for uh, one of your elderly parents or maybe for younger children, then this is the perfect phone for that. If you are someone that would like to take a second phone as a 
back up or something like that again I think this does an excellent job but it depends on your purpose let me know what you guys think and if this is something that you would buy for this price then I'll have a link in the description below as well on where you can check that out now as a lot of the flagship phones are now getting rid of things like the fingerprint scanners on the back and also the headphone jack and a couple of other things here and there I think these guys are doing an excellent job maintaining all of that and uh, I think for the price you're going to pay, £140, it's an absolute bargain. So do check them out and see what you guys think yourself. And if there's anything else you'd like to know, drop a comment below. I'll try to help you out as much as I can. And if you did like this review, hopefully you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. I've got some awesome reviews coming up in the future. I will be reviewing a lot more phones as well. So keep an eye out for that. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you at the next one. Take care.